appreciating uh, Dr. Pat Johnson and um, Daniel uh, Drazen that invite me here. I'm uh, Victor Yan uh, from uh, University of Toronto. And uh, a bit of a, a disclosure, uh, so I work at Sunnyboro Hospital, the largest trauma center in Canada. And we have a, uh, one of the large uh, cancer centers as well. And the uh, disclosure here is that 7D Surgical is a, um, uh, was a research project in, in our lab and hospital. And uh, now I, th I think we are fairly glad that it's a company, a large company with an international presence now. So uh, at this conference, I'm glad that we can have this disclosure because this is really our uh, proudest moment. So um, I want to take you through a, a few uh, different exposures here today. And we're going to start with a uh, T2. Uh, uh, pedicle screw insertion. So these are fairly common cases that when we do from uh, C2 to uh, T2 where you need to cross the cervical uh, thoracic uh, junction and I want to introduce uh, uh, to you the technology first. So we talked about line of sight issues already. So here we have our surgical light and then so the machine vision cameras are actually embedded within the surgical light. So um, when we turn on the surgical light, the, the light is obviously uh, pointing into the exposure and that we, even from the medical students in the audience here, you know, as surgeons, you always learn how to point your light into the exposure. So that line of sight issue is completely uh, solved. And the next thing about the machine vision cameras is to think of the machine vision camera acting like the two eyes of your master surgeon, like Dr. Johnson here. So, you know, so you, you have the two eyes, binocular vision, looking at the surface topology of the, uh, of the vertebral bodies, one single vertebral body, and the master surgeon can tell from you know, minute differences from that vertebra body to what the CT scan looks like. And then uh, they can tell, you know, is this the right level and uh, where is the landmark? And the machine vision does that. So, so, so the camera does that vision and then there's a whole set of uh, artificial intelligence algorithm that's running in, in the background that does that. So um, I, I, we're gonna go ahead and try to uh, register this for you. So first of all, this is a reference clamp. It's simply a bone clamp and then we just put them on very quickly. And then uh, we will take what's called a flash. So I'm going to show it to you. And if, you, if our camera can look at the um, field here. So we will sh shine the light right into the exposure. And that looks to be good. And then now we will take a flash. And I think uh, if we have our camera looking at my hand right here. OK, and then we're going to take a flash. So that flash takes about 0.3 seconds, and now we can see on the screen here, this actually contains about a quarter million points. Each individual point, I'm gonna have our team zoom in to there right now, each individual point is measured with 0.3 millimeter accuracy. So each of these dots are a point. Now, believe it or not, you know, we, the, the tools are already tracked. The tools are already tracked, and then now we want to tell the system that surgeon knows which level we are operating around. You know, we are not uh, uh, completely ignorant of where the surgical exposure is. So this is like showing the medical student, you know, where the left lamina is. That's the left lamina. This is the spinous process, and this is the right lamina. And it's important to understand this is not point matching. I'm just showing the medical student where this anatomy is. Whatever I'm showing there has probably a plus minus five millimeter difference there, but that's not, that's not an issue. So now with that, the system does just like what Dr. Johnson or master surgeon will do. You know, your eyes, you're gonna do a mental calculation, except here this is a computerized AI calculation. Now you can see all of the green dots, which is what the 0.3 millimeter, a quarter million points are those, and you select about, no, the computer selects about 2,000 of those. Now with that, we know that we are right on the bone, we're right on the bone, we're right at the joint, so we are ready to, to, to navigate. So I sort of slow this whole process down for you guys to see you know, where, where, where the um, navigation works with the 7D system here. And now, as uh, Dr. Kim was talking about before, you know, we are not here trying to, to uh, the, the navigation is not trying to tell you to find a point. You're supposed to find a point by an anatomy and you check it, you verify it. So that looks good. So we have a long awl here. So the our awl will penetrate you know, all the way down into, right? And then we can quickly, so the simplicity is the other thing that the design that, that we've tried to enforce here. So we just have a navigated uh, all and the navigated the pedicle finder. Now it's with the navigated pedicle finder, we want to show you that we have sort of building, you know, planning on the fly. So as I put this through, as I put this through, well, I know the size. And our nurses also 
or learned that from this, we need about a 30 and a, a, a five, five would do, but I think today we're gonna put in a four or five screw, so we're gonna take that. And now we're gonna switch to the augmented reality view. And the screw is gonna find its way. Okay, so we're done there. That's one level. And then, you know, unlike the other uh, demonstrations you've seen today, you know, because, uh, you know, the, the, we can't, you know, it, it, you can't uh, do a rescanning from one level to the next level. And here, because of all the imaging is done as a uh, pre-op uh, CT scan, and uh, we don't have to do any radiation during the case, and uh, you can easily uh, reflash to the re-register. So we're going to go to another level. So here again, uh, we're going to go to, this is a T11, T10, T9. So we're going to go to T9. And uh, by the way, one of the pitfalls that we see with the navigation, whenever you put the tools in onto the bone and that you don't think that your tool tip is touching the bone, I think 70% chance that you probably counted the level wrong. So we recently won an award at the uh, CNS is actually for the machine vision camera picking up wrong levels. So I think that that is key. So whenever you think something's off based on anatomy information, always trust your intuition with anatomy. You probably counted the level wrong. So here, the surgeon's in control. So we're gonna go to T9. And that's T9 now, and then now we're going to try to, you know, just attach the reference frame. You saw how fast it went. And then we're going to shine the light to the, to the right location again. So this is looking at T9. And then we can do the flash again. So... Again, so now we have the, have the system flash, and now I'm going to show you again, just to re repeat it, what the, at, the, at the sort of the real speed of how we do this. And we verify the accuracy once we uh, put the uh, tools in there. So again, you can see all of those green dots on, um, so that's a fairly good confidence that the, you, that the, 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 the system is uh, doing a good job, and then uh, we, can, we can accept the... Uh, the navigation, and then we can go and uh, try to place the next screw. So again, the system's designed for speed and also has the tactile feedback. So all the surgeons have been trained using um, freehand technique. You know, we want to ensure that you still have all of your tactile feedback. So, so when, when you are on the correct trajectory, right, once you are on the correct trajectory, really it doesn't take more than two fingers of pressure to, to, to put this in. So, you know, we, we, we should be able to do this very, very quickly and uh, we will get the uh, trajectory to be saved and, uh, and, and, then, and then you can go again. So now here you can see that we have the pedicle probe in the uh, pedicle now, and uh, sometimes, you know, it happens. You get a, you, you have a system there, uh, you, 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 you have your suction, and then this thing just moved, for example, like that. So now we know we are no longer, no longer accurate. So with a, a, a interrupted CT imaging type of technique, so now you will actually have to bring in the O-arm or, or a aero scanner and all the your zim, you have to do it again. But we have light here, so we have, the, and then we, we, we can just reflash it very quickly. So we do that, and we do a reflash, and this time we don't even pick any points anymore because the system remembers where, which level we are working on, and uh, the system should be back in um, operation within a second. And I'm going to put the... Um, so we are back in there. We're exactly the same spot. So you can see this is really built for workflow. So all of the navigation systems, including the robotics, right? The, the robots are only as good as the navigation is. So really, you, 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 if you have a fast navigation system can take care of all of these workflow interruptions, that then, 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 then really we are, we, we, are, we, we are solving a lot of troubles in, in, the, in, in spinal navigation. So if we save the, registry, uh, the, the trajectory over there, And then we will show the augmented uh, view again on the, on, on, on. And now we can see. Good. So now, I think the, uh, a, a lot of the uh, questions here is about uh, what can we do um, 
uh, for example, a smaller incision. And so here we're going to try a smaller incision one. And uh, I did the dissection yesterday, but I think it was the cadaver drawing out the incision looks actually a little bigger than what I saw yesterday. And uh, so we have a milli incision over here. We're going to clamp onto what we think is the uh, um, S1. And then uh, I'll show you what the uh, incision uh, size uh, looks like. So, good. <laughs> So I'm going to go to uh, S1 on my Fopato selection. So a lot of these things are surgeon controlled, as you can see. Have my lights on. And then we can go ahead and take the flash. And we're going to spend some time to show you the flash, uh, uh, the 3D uh, pictures over there. So you can see that you know, if the tissue didn't dry up, this will look like a, 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 a typical uh, perimedian uh, incision. Uh, so, you, so on this side will be where you can uh, dock your tubular retractors in, you know, if I had one today. And then uh, we can uh, pick our points now. So again, these points are loosely picked just to see what the um, anatomy is. And then uh, now we'll go again, go ahead and register that. So that looks pretty good there. That looks pretty good, so we can accept that. Now the system's already registered. So I have a uh, small incision here. I already put a S1 K wires in, so I'm just going to show that we're going to put in the uh, L5 uh, K wire in, right? So then, um, so that looks reasonable over there. So I think that's good. So this is a, I had made a stab incision earlier there. And I'm gonna, we're putting this in the, through the same stabbing position, and then we'll get both the uh, um, S1 and the L5 pedicle screws in. We can save the trajectory. Now, I didn't have a, 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 a dilator here, so we just make do with this uh, three, uh, three cc syringe uh, tip. There we go. And you can really update your trajectories if you want to. So update that trajectory for me. And again, just two finger pressure. Put it in, and then we can update that again. And now just K the K wire. Okay, so with that in, now you can just put in you know, any uh, of your um, cannulated uh, screws of your choice. So uh, uh, in a short amount of time here, I've demonstrated, demonstrated to you like, three different incisions from uh, you know, top of the thoracic uh, down to the uh, L5, S1, and we went through, I think, what, probably six uh, registrations already. So you can see that with the power of light, uh, with uh, machine vision, you can really power through uh, these uh, cases without any um, radiation. So uh, any questions, I can entertain them. Any questions? From just a quick question, do you always need a new flash for each level, or can you do two or three levels in one session? Uh, that's a very good question, yeah. So we just recently published it in an AO spine paper uh, to see, you know, amount of uh, surgeon manipulation, how much uh, error you, you, you will be uh, uh, anticipating, and then uh, also the uh, respirator, um, uh, respiration uh, movement uh, from the ventilator. So um, I think if you, if you have a choice, I think we will still preach the, the concept of segmental registrations. So you should always have the reference clamp on the level that you're putting the screws in. But you know, as I said, we are a large trauma center. So if the spinous process is broken off, there's a, there's a really difficult uh, a scenario, then you can work in the adjacent level. I would not recommend your reference rate to be more than th three levels away. Any other questions? Any other questions? Johnson. The question is why limit it to three levels? 
Yeah, so, uh, so uh, we can look at the details from our paper. So, you know, the, the upper bound here, we think that we want to be able to deliver a, uh, a, a final accuracy. So we're not talking about registration accuracy. We are talking about the TRE. So, you know, this is the, 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 the holy grail of, you know, the final screw placement accuracy. We want to keep that below two millimeters. So in that kind of scenario, I think uh, uh, three levels uh, is really the absolute upper limit. I think the adjacent level is probably something that we should we, should, we can tolerate, and then we will preach uh, the concept of segmental registration with the reference array on the level you're working on. So, Victor, I, I'm, I'm a little slow, and you're a very smart guy. I'm trying to understand why this is different than other imaging technologies that you are not confident further away. Do you, what, are, what, are the, what are the mechanics? What are the physics? What, what are the anatomic reasons? <laughs> Good. So, um, so I think that the main difference here, if our, uh, if our uh, camera system can pick, pick it up there, it's, it's all in here, right? So this is really the, uh, the, the hardware or the, or, the, or the smarts of it. Um, the machine vision cameras in there, they really function, as I said, you know, uh, a master surgeon's two eyes looking into the uh, surgical um, exposure. And the, the, the other CT scanners, they, they are doing that too. They are not using light. They are using ionizing radiation, right? They are using ionizing radiation. And you know, we are using light, non-ionizing radiation in uh, either in open surgical cases or in mini open or tubular retractor cases where you can have exposure of unique bony anatomies. If you have a flat piece of bone, then then th there will be trouble. Actually, our next paper coming out will be in plus one, demonstrating you know, in w what kind of scenarios when you cannot mathematically register. And that would be true for you know, all the other uh, uh, surface-based navigation technology as well. In this scenario, because of the point density, optically we can acquire, uh, acquire are so high that you can almost always find nitty-gritty details of the bony topology. And the master surgeons pick up on that. And as a result, the AI algorithm here is trained to pick up those tiny differences. And this uniqueness of the bony anatomy allows us to do, this almost appears like a trick, right? But there's no trick here. I just did it six times for you. And uh, this, is, this is the cadaver provided the uh, SSF. We just certainly didn't bring this one. Um, I hope that answers your question, but if there, I, I will encourage everyone who thinks this is a trick, come to the uh, cadaver lab and try it out. Victor, uh, this is, uh, I've, I've been a big uh, fan and proponent of you uh, and 7D and everything. This is uh, um, really, uh, I don't know why this technology isn't the dominant technology um, across all navigation. Um, but um, can you, um, in getting to, because as you know, and uh, I think we've talked about this before, uh, if uh, you're in LA and you're trying to make minimally invasive incisions and whatnot, and your midline incision is bigger than your tubular um, kind of two wilty incision. Is there any way you can use like an exoscope or a, a microscope to see the f a fine detail bony anatomy and light capture that to um, to reference off your uh, your process or uh, is that not possible? So you are you are trying to foretell our future, and that's uh, I, I completely agree with you. So just uh, uh, watch for the maybe next year or maybe the year after so the Seattle uh, uh, meeting here, and we will show you guys. Uh, uh, this is we actually do not require exoscope, and uh, and this will be a, a 7D a retractor system. Here. 